Good morning. Welcome, everyone. You'll find the announcements this morning in the bulletin. So if you'd like to see those, you can find them there. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The peace of Christ be with you. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Amen. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from the death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given our all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Mysterious and divine presence, too often our hearts burn within us because our bodies know before our minds that you are here, working in us and through us in this world. Open our eyes and help us to recognize you in all places and in all people. For the sake of the one whose presence is never far, Jesus Christ, amen.
The first reading is from Psalms. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you have established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried. And to you, the Lord, I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may, may praise you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel comes from Luke, the 24th chapter. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? 
Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he inter interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, We now will be viewing a message from the Bishop of Northwestern, the Northwestern Ohio Senate, Bishop Daniel Bowdoin. Is that correct? Whatever. Bowden? Okay. Thank you. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the crucified and risen one, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our gospel reading begins in a difficult place, and I would venture to say that we have all learned a thing or two about being in a difficult place. Doubt-filled and disillusioned, discouraged and disheartened, demoralized and disappointment, emotions that we have all experienced during this past year. Let me tell you, this has been a year like no other, and some of us have experienced more difficulty than others. This has been a long walk. This has been a long journey. These tired old feet of ours stopped tapping and dancing months and months ago. 
Our gospel reading begins in a difficult place. As we hear about the journey to Emmaus, it is late in the afternoon on the very first Easter Sunday. Two travelers are on their way from Jerusalem to Emmaus, and they are followers of Jesus. They are disciples of Jesus. They are a part of the fellowship of faith, a fellowship and a faith that they believe would last forever. But that was then, and this is now. Because now all of their hopes and all of their dreams are just as dead as the one they followed. The arrest, crucifixion, and burial of Jesus has taken every ounce of hope from them, and they are still in shock as we read in the Gospel. Our own chief priests and leaders handed him over, and he was condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one. We had hoped. And isn't that one of the hardest places for us to be? In a place where there is no hope. So these two wayfarers decide to get away from it all. They leave Jerusalem and journey to another place to pick up the pieces of their broken lives, to turn their backs on their dashed dreams and crushed hopes, to walk the seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And at the start, it's just the two of them walking and talking going over and over the same old ground, rethinking what they could have said or what they should have done, coulda, woulda, shoulda. And don't we all do that? Keep playing it over and over in our minds. It's like when you lose your keys and you keep going back to where they're supposed to be, thinking if you just go back there enough, they're going to appear. When I would misplace stuff, my mom would always say, just sit down, think about it, and retrace your steps. Go back over it and begin at the beginning, which is what these two Emmaus travelers are doing. And while they are remembering and recollecting, a stranger meets them on the way. It is the crucified and risen Jesus, but their hearts are so full of defeat and so devoid of faith that they are unable to recognize him. And what's more, when this stranger asks what they're talking about, they can't believe that this guy doesn't know. What are you, living under a rock, they ask? Don't you read the papers? Don't you watch the news? Where have you been the last three days? And so they pour out their hearts and they tell the stranger everything. They tell him about Jesus, a man of God and a prophet, dynamic in his work and his word, blessed by God and loved by the people. But then our own religious leaders turned on him, sentenced him to death and crucified him. But we had hoped, we had hoped we had hoped that he would be the one, the one to deliver and the one to save. But that was then, and this is now. That was then, back before the diagnosis. That was then, back before the divorce. That was then, back before the demotion. That was then, back before the, the global pandemic. That was then, but, but this is now. Here's where we're at now. And when they finish their side of the story, this stranger begins to tell the rest of the story. He says, so thick-headed and so slow-hearted. Weren't you listening when he told you that all of this must happen? Don't you remember how the prophets foretold that the Messiah must suffer and only then enter into his glory? And then the stranger begins at the beginning. Five books of Moses. And then on through the prophets, pointing out everything about God's hope and God's promise. 
and they are so taken by his words that when they reach their destination, when they reach Emmaus, they don't want to let him go. They want him to stay. In the old King James Version of the Bible, the Emmaus travelers say, Abide with us, for it is evening, and the day is long spent. Words of inspiration for that well-known hymn, Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. Stay with me. Walk with me. They don't want him to go. So they invite him to tarry and to linger. The stranger agrees, and, and as they sit down for supper, the strangest thing happens. Though a guest in someone else's home, the stranger becomes the host. He picks up the bread, he blesses the bread, he breaks the bread, and he gives it to them. And in that simple, sacred meal, their eyes fly open, and they see with complete clarity who he is and he is risen yes he is risen indeed and for the two wayfarers the way is now clear their doubt is gone and their despair is forgotten the travelers to Emmaus they are so renewed in their faith so strengthened in their hope that their feet grow wings and they race all the way back to Jerusalem to tell Peter James John and the others all that happened to them while they were on the way. How they encountered the crucified and risen Jesus in the sharing of scripture and in the breaking of bread. The good news of the Emmaus walk is the truth that no matter how bad things get, no matter where you run to hide when the world gets to be too much, no matter where you are on your own faith journey, you might be walking to him or you might be walking from him. He is with you. The crucified and risen Jesus is with you. And he doesn't demand explanation. You don't have to justify your reason. The Lord of heaven and earth simply meets you on the way as you walk this walk of life. The promise of the risen Jesus is the promise that whatever route you take or when you just can't take it anymore, he is there because of the truth of a resurrection and a crucifixion. He is already there before we will ever be. You see, this morning's Bible reading is a powerful reminder that Jesus always comes. He comes to the disappointed and the doubt-filled. He comes to the demoralized and the dejected. He comes to those who don't know their Bibles. He comes to those who don't recognize him even when he's walking beside them. He comes to those who have given up all hope and to those who are hightailing it back home. And it is in this Bible story that we actually find the blessedness of brokenness. Because the truth is, we are all broken. Not doing what we ought to do, not saying what we ought to say, not being who God created us to be, discouraged, disheartened, demoralized, disappointed, dismayed, dejected, but still he comes. The crucified and risen Jesus comes. Though this really shouldn't surprise us. His entire ministry was focused on those who needed him the most, the last, the lost, the least. And wherever Jesus finds them, he shares everything he has. Until finally he offers himself for those who need him the most but also for you, dear child of God. Jesus also does it for you. 
making himself known by a cross and an empty tomb through the scripture and in the breaking of the bread so that you too may see and come to believe. And it is in this way that Jesus continues to come, never demanding but patiently waiting for us to open our eyes and open our hearts to trust that he is truly present. And it may happen as you fold your hands in prayer, it may happen in the reading of, of scripture, or it may happen while talking with a friend. It may happen as you walk along the road or like those travelers to Emmaus, it may very well be in the breaking of the bread. God in Christ Jesus is near. And dear child of God, may you know the promise of his presence, the gift of Emmaus awaits you and wherever you are on this journey pray that when the risen Jesus appears your eyes may be opened and your hearts may burn that renewed in faith you too may turn and run out of Emmaus out of pandemic out of the empty tomb to tell the world to tell the entire world about all of the good things that God has done for you. In the name of the crucified and risen Jesus. Amen. Welcome. Ik Pemesi for singing the anthem this morning. Good morning, everyone. Today I'll be singing. I'll be singing "Be Thou My Vision." Let us profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will now receive the offering. Let us pray. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. You shower your church with grace, O God. Unite the whole church on earth, so that with one heart it testifies to the resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and love. Hear us, O God. You proclaim the blessing of life forevermore. Like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation, restore waters, cleanse the air, and provide revitalizing moisture to parched land. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. <clears throat> you direct the nations, O God. Guide all in authority, that they shepherd their peoples in the ways of your love. Defeat in us our impulse to war. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority, and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. You place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of your generous spirit that we provide for the needs of others. Announce your peace to those who are lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. Hear us, O oh God. You give us fellowship with one another in this faith community. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together so that we live in love for one another and our joy may be complete. Hear us, O God. You share the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy. Unite us with them in resurrection hope. Hear us, O God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life. With Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May our glorious Lord grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.